everyone. I'm George Jardine and welcome back. This is tutorial number two for the Lightroom Develop module. And today we're going to dig into the Crop Tool. I'm putting this video on the Crop Tool right at the beginning of the series because cropping is almost always one of the very first things I will do when starting to work on a photo. To get into the crop mode, you can either click the crop icon right up here or you can press the R key. I got into the habit of using the R key because no matter what module you're in, the R key always takes you to the develop module and puts you into crop mode. The R key also toggles you in and out of crop mode, like this, which is nice because cropping truly is a mode in Lightroom. It's completely non destructive, so you can toggle back and forth and tweak a crop as many times as you like, all without having to worry about when to save and without the fear of doing something that you can't undo. Anyway, let's start with this photo of the stairway. And you can see that I already do have a crop on this photo. When the crop tool is active, then you see all the settings right here below it. And one of those settings is the reset button, which can be handy. Want to start over with a crop? Just click here, like this. So this is what things will usually look like when you first go into crop mode. You'll notice that the crop mode has an overlay that might be helpful which is this grid or whatever. There are a bunch of them, and once you're in crop mode, simply pressing the O key cycles you through the various overlays. There's a so-called rule of thirds overlay, this diagonal one, and some others, like this spiral, which I'm not sure how this helps you crop in Lightroom, but someone somewhere loves this one. And then we come to this new one in Lightroom 5, which is all about aspect ratios. And it's only here that you can see what a 4x5 crop or a 5x7 crop or whatever might look like on your photo. You can't snap to the overlay or anything like that, so it's just a visual guide. If you want to add some special aspect ratio to this overlay, you go up here to Tool, and under the Crop Guide Overlay, over down here at the bottom, choose Aspect Ratios, and that pops a list with a few more to choose from. Turn them on or off, and you can decide which ones you want to see in the overlay. Then, if you want the Crop Tool to cycle through just two or three of the ones that are built in, go back here to the menu. This time, go to Choose Overlays to Cycle. And for my work, I usually turn all of these off except for the top two, the grid and the rule of thirds, because those are the most useful for me. One final note, these crop overlays are completely separate from the loop overlays that you now have in both library and develop. Jumping out of crop for just a minute and going up here to the view menu, these loop overlay items on here are new for develop, and we cover them in tutorial number 14 because I think they're probably most useful with the manual lens corrections. Anyway, the loop overlays simply disappear when you go into the crop mode, so they really aren't relevant in this tutorial. For the crop mode, this aspect ratio overlay is different and also new for Lightroom 5. And unfortunately, as I said, you can't snap to it. I'm not sure how that would work anyway, but if you do want to be constrained to some special aspect ratio, there's a menu for that over here, and that's next. When you first get into crop mode and roll your mouse out over one of these controls and click and start dragging things around, you'll usually find that you're stuck in this mode that constrains the aspect ratio. If you're dragging from a corner, that looks like this, with the opposite corner staying where it is. And if you're dragging from a center point, like this, then Lightroom will scale the width of the crop and keep the original aspect ratio. It works this way because the default for this little lock icon over here is to be locked, which locks the aspect ratio of the crop 
to that of the original image. If I click that lock to unlock it and then go back and try again, you'll see that I can now make the crop any shape that I want from any one of these control points, from a corner or from the middle. Once I've set up my crop, I can just click the crop icon or type the R key again and that bounces me back out of crop mode. Now I can go on about my color correction or whatever and come back and finish up the crop any time. Then if I have a particular shape or aspect ratio that I want to use, I can choose that from the list right next to the lock icon. Say for instance that I wanted a square crop, then I would choose one by one from this menu and Lightroom would set that up and at the same time it locks you into that aspect. So the little lock is locked again. And when I drag any one of the corners, I'm always creating a perfect square. For this photo, I'll start by resetting the whole crop. And then notice over here, doing that sets us up to something called original. For this particular full frame camera, original would mean a 2 by 3 aspect ratio which you can also find here on the list. So in this case, 2 by 3 and original are the same thing. If you want a specific aspect ratio, set that up and make sure the lock is locked and go ahead and make your crop. For those of you who love keyboard shortcuts, the little lock icon can be toggled off and on with the A key. That's A for aspect ratio, like this. For this photo, I like to crop in from the right side down to about here, and then I can click inside the crop and drag if I need to move things around. For this photo, I want to make sure I get things centered up nicely, and I'm done. If I need to rotate my crop at all, I'll just roll my mouse over here anywhere outside of the crop, and when I'm out here, you get this little curved double headed arrow icon. That tells me that I can click and drag to rotate anywhere out here, like this. So for this crop, dragging up to about minus one and a half degrees looks pretty good. In Lightroom, when you click and drag inside the crop, you are moving the photo around under the crop to get it positioned exactly where you want. And when you need to rotate things, you click outside of the crop. And again, you're rotating the picture under the crop, which just means your finished crop will always be perfectly centered in the work area and that you don't have to tilt your head to see what it's going to look like. Just pressing R toggles you in and out so that you can preview your crop or go back and tweak it some more. So that's easy. And those are the basics for cropping. Next, let's jump over to the photo of the silhouette of the iron worker. And again, I'll press R to jump into the crop mode. Now, every time you go into crop mode on a new photo, you will get the default crop rectangle out here on the edges of your photo. And you can start here if you like, dragging from one of the edges. But if you'd rather work with one that's more like the old one in Photoshop, click the Crop Frame tool, which gives you an actual crop tool that you can put anywhere you want on the image and just click to draw out a crop, like this. And then when you let go, you're back in the rectangular cropping mode, where you can click out here to rotate or click in here and drag around to move the crop around. Finally, if you want to rotate the crop exactly 90 degrees, you just press the X key. The X key flips the crop back and forth, so press it once, and that flips it vertical. Press it again, and you're back to horizontal. Or if your aspect ratio is locked, you can just grab a corner and sort of pull it to one side, and that will flip the orientation too, like this. And so that's just about it for cropping. One last tool that we need to look at here, and that's the angle tool. To do that, let's look at this photo of a friend photographing in Iceland. And once more, I'll click to go into the crop mode. 
Now, you probably noticed that when we were rotating things in the first example of the stairway, that this angle control is interactive, and it shows you what the angle is as you're rotating right on the image. You can also click right on the slider and rotate your photo like this. When you're rotating, you get the finer grid to help you get things lined up. But when you have a very clear horizon like this, sometimes it's easier to use the Straighten tool, which sits right here next to the angle control. Just click it and get your mouse right over the edge of your horizon on one side and click and drag over to the other side. Get it lined up over here, and when you let go, Lightroom sets the rotation for you making whatever horizon line you clicked on perfectly horizontal. So that's cool. And it works with verticals, too. Jumping over here to the photo of the buildings in Venice, I'll hit the R key, and I'm going to roll my mouse right up here and line it up with the top edge of this building, and then drag all the way to the bottom, like this. When you're perfectly lined up along the edge of the building, let go, and poof! you have a perfect rotation for your crop, as long as your camera was level and you don't have any convergence in these verticals. If you do have some convergence, then you'll want to look at the new upright controls over in the Lens Corrections panel and probably get your perspective worked out before you try and make a finished crop. And while I'm on the subject of Lens Corrections, that's where we will cover this last little switch that you have here in the crop panel, the Constrain to Warp checkbox. This switch sets an automatic crop for you if you've created some distortion with a lens correction. So we cover this last control in the first video on lens correction, which is tutorial number 12. Until you get to some pretty dramatic lens corrections or distortions or whatever, you'll never have to worry very much about this switch. And so, that's it! In the next tutorial, we're going to tackle the incredibly subjective issue of white balance. And so, I'll see you there!